All right, everyone. So welcome back to another update on Sigmeto. That's gonna be the last one for a while. But so what we're talking about today? So today we're talking about light maps. So I wrote a very basic proof of concept uh, light mapper just because I wanted to learn the technique. There is so much more work uh, to do on it, but for now it does what what it's supposed to. So we see we have a basic basic scene which is the same scene we saw being ray traced in the previous sample right but you can see now basically samples are accumulated if you give it a bit of time i think I'm, it's gonna stop around 600 samples uh, there is actually a debug window actually 400 so you see it's, it's slowly converging conversion is not that fast but i'm doing very uh very simple ray tracing not fast or simple sorry, any sophisticated uh, shooting rays or, or anything. Also, I'm being um, V-Sync limited, right? So I'm fighting with STL to remove the V-Sync. Uh, doing one, one pass of the rays takes two milliseconds, so effectively I'm limited by the V-Sync. It, it could go way faster, but anyway, so this is what you get, is, is around quite happy with the result. Uh, you can still see a little bit of uh, artifact around the UV island because I don't have access to, um, for example, conservative rasterization, but with a bit more effort it could, it could be fixed, but I think it's, it's good enough um, for what I was trying to achieve. And so what is happening here? Let's, let's have a quick look. So first of all, we can start baking again, right? We can change the number of samples and we start baking again. But if we want to understand what's going on a little bit more, let's let's have a look uh, with debug. So here, and I'm going to explain why it's shaking. So what you first need to do, you need to do a, a screen space render, basically, your geometry. That's how you generate your texture. Uh, for for your map and we can actually see sorry for your your atlas basically for your for your textures and we can see that if I reset the baking it start baking again so each of these slots is uh, 1024 by 1024 here is being stretched because I'm basically bleating on the on the swap chain so it's being stretched and per frame I do a full pass of rays one ray per pixel on one of those. So it's going in a circle. So it's gone from the first, the second, third, and goes keep going basically. So it takes six frames basically to do a full pass of the whole texture. This is basically just done to avoid have too big of a, of a light map that is gonna kill the frame rate. They will still want to get interactive, but again, I'm being slowed down by the V-Sync, so it takes a bit longer to, to converge. But that's what's happening. So you first, we, I first do a G buffer pass where as a position, he outputs uh, the UV done with the light map, which are generated by X Atlas. Um, and then I use this as a starting point for shooting rays, because previously the ray, the ray tracer was shooting right from the camera, which doesn't work for light mapping because you could do it, but you have no guarantees you're going to hit every pixel. Uh, so that's not good. So instead of doing this way, starting from a texture, reconstructing the position normal of where you are. So here is on this point on the sphere and it's going to figure out, okay, this is the world position and this is the normal of this point. I can shoot away from that. And you guarantees to hit every pixel and to fully populate your, your light map, right? And that's basically all there is to it. And then basically the normal uh, light mapper uh, the normal ray tracing goes, it does three bounces, if I recall correctly. Um, the main reason I need the G buffer pass is because I cannot shoot rays, uh, at least metal doesn't allow so far to shoot rays in, uh, in any other stage than compute. If I could do it in fragments, I could do directly in fragment. I rasterize the geometry in the same way without need to store anything. Because in the fragment shader, I know the position, I know the UV, I know the normal, I know everything, I can shoot the ray. Um, Vulcan and the X12, now they do support that. They didn't support that initially, so maybe Metal will as well. Okay. 
Um, one, one interesting thing is that initially I did uh, a FATG buffer. So a 32 bit per channel RGBA texture for the position. Then I had the normal as a normal uh, RGBA 8. And then I had UVs as FP16, RG FP16. So it was a lot of data per pixel. But then I used basically the new feature. I don't remember which metal version, basically to create a visibility buffer. Where a visibility buffer, what you store, you just store the barycentric, what we see here, and I'm gonna explain in a bit why it's like this. So you can see there are two channels of the barycentric per triangle. And then there is the position, which is not really the position anymore. It's basically here is a 32 bit value. So one channel, 32 bit story, the primitive index. Uh, the texture is just not able because I'm doing a simple blit and it basically the color doesn't come through. Uh, probably because there is no alpha anyway. Uh, so that's why you see black. But with those two data, then in the ray tracer, I'm able to do everything and we can actually see really quick. So this is the function I used to get the light map ray. So I'm gonna, I'm given an instance index. So I know which block basically I'm processing. So I know, oh, this is mesh zero, one, two. So I can access the corresponding mesh using the argument buffer we saw in the previous uh, video. And then I'm going to read from digibuffer positions, which again, the name is wrong, but I didn't change it. I'm going to read the 32 bit primitive index and I'm going to use that to basically do the lookup in the index buffer, then read the normal, read the position, and then I have everything I need to basically shoot a right. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's what's happening here. Now, why is this shaking? Now it's not shaking anymore because it's done. It's done debugging, so you see it's a lot more samples, it's, it's a lot smoother, nicer. Anyway, why was it jittering like that? This is because uh, I had a jitter uh, parameter on the, on the rasterization position such that you can kind of compensate for the missing uh, com conservative rasterization. So you can get the borders shifted around such that then overall is going to hide the seam because the main problem with the seam is that when you go and read the pixel at the border with linear interpolation of the neighbors uh, that the texture sampler does, uh, you, you're basically reading the black value okay, of the light map. So if you go back and check the light map, you're reading basically the black value and that's where the seam come from. By jittering around, it's that the light map and the number of sample averages out and then you start hiding it. Now, all this stuff, uh, basically learned from an amazing pre presentation from Janos. So that presentation, I'm going to put the link uh, in the description and check it out because it's really, really good. It's basically explain everything you need to do and basically just run through all the steps, implemented in Metal, debugged it. But there's, once I had all the basic building blocks, like the ray tracer and then generating the UV, then everything else kind of fell in place fairly easily. Okay, so this is the new sample. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload upload it on GitHub, uh, and then you're able to see the code, see everything as usual, right? And you can see that is not uh, this is rasterized because like the debug line now is correctly occluded by the depth, okay? Which in the ray tracer before it wasn't. It was was like this line was blitted basically on top because it was no depth when I was doing the ray tracing, just a blit is that here is correctly uh, rasterized. Simply, the, the shader is very simple, which is probably not correct because you just probably, probably want the bounce light, and not the direct lighting. Uh, but I'm basically sampling the, sampling the light map using the light map UVs and returning that fragment color. And then basically that's what you get. Okay, so that's it for this video and see you in the next one.